Today is the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, Cycle B. Hard times had fallen upon the people of Judah, once a rich and proud nation. They were weary from their defeat and the destruction of their city and temple, which was a symbol of God's presence in their midst. They were afraid because their future was bleak. Isaiah brings a message of hope to the weary and frightened people. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, the prophet was all too familiar with the failed policies of the royal house <coughs> that refused to put God first. The king relied on his earthly resources, armies and allies, but not on God. <coughs> this led to the hardship and eventual collapse of the kingdom. The message of hope is that God himself will come to save them. The eyes of the blind will be opened, the deaf will hear, and the lame shall leap like a deer, and the mute shall speak. Prosperity shall return to the land just as fresh water transform a dry, parched land. <clears throat> In times of struggle and hardship, we need to seek God's help. Some politicians display a lack of faith in the power of God to work in mysterious ways. When amputated soldiers are able to walk again with the aid of prosthetics, when disadvantaged students become successful professionals, etc., some attribute these successes solely to the human spirit of the American culture. They ignore the faith of these people in God and the true source of the American spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I have seen, read about, and have listened to hundreds of success stories <coughs> about humans who overcame insurmountable odds and every one of them has always claimed that their faith in God was the source of their motivation to rise above what appeared to be humanly impossible. God was the source of that, their inspiration, but the news media often chose to ignore it. Once an airplane crashed in the cold Potomac River, and all the passengers, about 300, were able to escape before the plane sank into the icy waters. The press raved about the skill of the pilot. During a later interview on television, when asked what happened as he was going down, the pilot praised the Blessed Virgin Mary. He said as the plane was going down, he was praying Hail Marys. In the gospel, Jesus' journey to the Decapolis, the 10 non-Jewish Jewish cities, non-Jewish cities on the sea shores of the Sea of Galilee. It appears that even among the non-Jews, Jesus was well known. 
Normally, people with great faith are the ones who bring others to Christ or to the church. <coughs> Remember the four paralytics who brought a crippled man on a stretcher when they found out the crowd was so large they couldn't even get to Jesus, they climbed on the roof and let him down. The question is, have you ever brought anyone to Jesus or the church to be healed? If the answer is no, why not? Are Jesus' healing stories true? Do you believe that the thousands of documented miracle stories by the church are true? Jesus demonstrated in today's story that he could heal with his touch as well as with his words. We are all in need of spiritual healing. Are we blind and deaf? to the immorality among us? And are we dumb when it comes to expression, our disapproval? Have we become so desensitized to what is sinful that we do not recognize the dirt and filth of immorality among us? the ease of access to pornography, reality shows where the lying, cheating, and obnoxious behavior can make a person popular, soap operas, telenovelas, where infidelity and divorce are projected as normal behavior. Most of the non-children movies contain acts of fornication, unmarried people engaging in behavior reserved for married people, couples. Cheating and lying has become acceptable ways of conducting business. You have seen or heard of an elderly woman who had about 80 cats in her house or the man who had about 50 dogs in his house. The houses were never cleaned. When the animal rescue workers arrive, they are overwhelmed by the smell and the filth in that place. Yet the owners of the houses, apparently it was normal we have succumbed to the amoral and immoral value system adopted by so many businesses and, poli uh, pol and politicians. We accept the hate-mongering half-truths of the media without research by ourselves. There are those who claim that the pro-life position is a war against women. Pregnancy is not a disease. There is no inherent right to fix it. The same people who claim that the Catholic Church is homophobic because, as they would say, love is all that matters. The misuse of reproductive organs against, is against natural law. A male and a female bring different forms of nurturing. A child is entitled to both a father and a mother. If a person wants to marry his dog, his love is all that matters. We do not allow 12-year-olds to drive on the highway. There is a norm and there are exceptions, but there are great dangers 
when we try to make exception the rule. Do not be herded like sheep to accept opinions which we carefully, with, if we carefully reflect upon them, we would reject them. <clears throat> Jesus came to heal us, not only by word, but also by touch. When we consume or commune with him today, ask him to heal our blindness and deafness and our inability to speak out against sin and evil. Mary, may the Lord open our eyes and our ears to what needs to be done to correct the faults of the nation and give us the courage to tell the truth. The gospel of the Lord.